Hello friends. Today we are going to discuss about what is term resistance and how to calculate the critical radius for insulation. Okay. Uh, before we start with this, uh, we in the previous lecture we already discussed what is thermal resistance. Now let me go through once again. Now in a rectangular system, in a rectangular system we all know that heat transfer that is Q X is given as minus K A by delta X into delta T. Or we said that Q is nothing but thermal potential difference divided by thermal resistance that is delta T divided by delta X by Ka now this thermal resistance is nothing but delta X by Ka for a rectangular system in a cylindrical system we had QR is Ka dt by dr. This is all we done in the previous lecture, where which was represented by 2 pi KL into tr minus t naught over log of r naught by ri. Yeah. Which can also further be rewritten as QR as T i minus T naught divided by ln R naught by R i divided by 2 pi K L. If you see this term, this term is known as your thermal resistance. So thermal resistance for any given system, that is rectangular system, spherical system or for the cylindrical system can be calculated from the expression of the heat transfer rate. Yeah. Now let's find out uh, uh, the thermal resistance in case of an insulation. Now suppose we have a pipe with this is the center of the axis of the pipe and let's say that's the width of the pipe. This is the width of the pipe or you can say it to be your pipe wall clear it's made up of some material a then let's we have an insulation surrounding this pipe of a material b let's say this is your insulation now clearly in this, if suppose there is a hot fluid entering into this pipe which is having a fluid temperature as Th infinity. And let's say the surrounding temperature is represented by Tc infinity. Now let's try to find out the thermal resistance through this particular system. For this, let's analyze this thing again in a different way that is let's say this is the center and let's say this is from the center this is radius R1. Over here let's say the temperature is given by T1. Let's say this is R2 of a material A and the temperature over here is T2 and then we have the insulin this is the inner uh, this thing is the inner wall and that's the outer wall of the pipe T and then we have the insulation material which is having a radius R0 made up of material B having the wall temperature T3 over here that at the outer insulation let's say heat transfer coefficient is HC0 inside 
the heat transfer coefficient is hc1 clear and there is a heat transfer from in towards out now this thing can also be represented by an electric circuit that is let's say a dc circuit which can be represented something like this uh, okay before that let me uh, make a temperature profile ideally let's say this is the fluid temperature th infinity that's the wall temperature t1 so let's say the fluid temperature will be something like first is it dips to temperature t1 then from temperature t1 to temperature t2 that is through the wall of the pipe linear profile from outer wall towards the insulation t3 by this thing and then by convection action from the insulation towards the outer that is tc infinity now this thing can also be represented in terms of the dc circuit electrical dc circuit which can be written as let's say th infinity that is t1 that is the resistance thermal resistance r1 from t1 to sorry from t1 to t2 let's say resistance is r2 from t2 to t3 resistance is r3 and then from t3 to tc the resistance is r4 so these are the four resistances so which can further be written as now the resistance which is there inside the fluid because of the convective nature will be nothing but 1 by h ci into 2 pi r1 l clear the resistance r2 because of the conduction will be ln r2 by r1 divided by 2 pi k of material a into l resistance between the wall and the insulative material ln r3 by r2 over 2 pi k b l and then by the convective nature from the insulating wall towards the ambient temperature that is r4 will be ln sorry not ln it will be convective nature so it will be h c naught into 2 pi r naught l so the overall heat transfer through this mid system insulating system it will be nothing but th infinity minus tc infinity over summation of all the thermal resistances so summation of all the thermal resistances will be r1 plus r2 plus r3 plus r4 which is nothing but q is equal to th infinity minus tc infinity over 1 by hci 2 pi r1 l plus ln r2 by r1 over 2 pi k a l plus ln r3 by r2 2 pi k b l plus 1 by hc naught 2 pi r naught l you most many of you must be agreeing so why we have this thing over because this and this both the fluid which is flowing through this is having a convective nature further the heat which moves from the insulating wall towards the surrounding temperature again it's a convective nature so heat transfer because of the convective natures 
these are the thermal resistances whereas from inside radius towards the outer radius conduction and from the outer radius towards the insulating material again conduction so these two terms are because of the conduction so the overall heat transfer for through an insulating material is represented by this expression clear then we gonna find out the critical radius of insulation critical radius of insulation is very much important because sometimes what happen is cuz this is very important because if the thickness is much higher then the heat loss can be minimized depend by increasing the thickness of the insulation but then there are some certain systems where the diameter is very small over there the thickness of insulation makes no sense so so minimum thickness of insulation is required and that can be calculated by calculating the critical radius of insulation so critical radius of insulation now insulations are very much important we have seen insulations over the electrical wires or some electrical resistors or some cylindrical electronic devices through which the current flows now over here for critical radius let's consider an electric wire having an insulating material around it with the thermal conductivity k let's suppose this is the cross sectional area of the wire having a radius r1 and let's say this is the insulating material surrounding that wire having a thermal conductivity k the inner radius is r1 let's say the outer radius is r the inner temperature is ti the outer temperature is t0 and let's say the surrounding temperature is t infinity having a thermal conductivity oh sorry heat transfer coefficient is h infinity now again this can also be again represented in terms of the resistance is through the electrical system that is of this is t1 the inner temperature t0 the outer temperature and let's say t infinity is the surrounding temperature so from t1 to t0 through the wire through the insulating material conductivity conductivity heat transfer so it will be r by r i over 2 pi k l from t0 towards t infinity convective nature so 1 by 2 pi r l h infinity clear so this is because of the conduction and this is because of the convection part now the overall heat transfer rate let's say q is nothing but i square r which will be nothing but t i minus t infinity divided by r total so r total is nothing but r because of the conduction plus r because of the convection this is the conduction part this is the convection part so r total can be written as ln r by r1 over 2 pi kl plus 1 by 2 pi rl into h infinity now we can clearly see from here as the outer radius increases that is if this increases r conduction increases whereas r convection decreases so that means there has to be an optimum value of r which will give me minimum r total and 
maximum heat loss maximum heat loss so for r minimum our total minimum what we're going to do is we're going to do tr d total by dr equal to 0 so differentiating your equation 1 with respect to r it will be 1 by 2 pi k r l minus 1 by 2 pi r square l h infinity equal to 0 so from here you have r equal to k by h infinity so, so therefore this r is nothing but your critical r which will yield minimum total resistance minimum total resistance that is del square r by del r square should be positive so double differentiating this term and put this r critical in that double different derivative so you should get that term as positive so that means at critical radius we'll have minimum resistance and we will have maximum heat loss at that given critical radius so let's plot a graph let's say this is the outer radius this and we have the resistance on the y-axis so let's say if this is r1 so as r1 increases r conduction increases and r convection decreases that i've already told over here as r increases r conduction increases as r increases r convection decreases so r critical so that means somewhere here we have r critical which will give me minimum value of which will give me the minimum r total so this is your r total so over here you'll have the minimum resistance and corresponding to your minimum resistance you'll have your critical radius so remember for cylindrical systems for cylindrical systems that is for electrical wires minimum radius of insulation required for minimum heat loss for maximum heat loss it will be r critical which will be k by h infinity clear so this tells us uh, this can be employed in cooling your cylindrical and cylindrical electrical and electronic systems where the design provides effective insulation and at the same time it promotes optimum heat loss so as to prevent overall heating so as to prevent your overall heating i again repeat this feature that is our critical critical radius is employed in cooling cylindrical electrical cylindrical electrical and electronic systems where the design provides effective insulation and at the same time promotes optimum heat loss so as to prevent overall heating in spherical systems the r critical is 2k by h infinity so remember this thing for cylindrical systems r critical is k by h infinity for rectangle for spherical systems r critical is 2k by h infinity clear further moving further now we're gonna ex move towards a new topic that is conduction and convection through extended surfaces conduction and convection through extended surfaces now such problems are encountered practically where you know a solid body having a small cross-sectional area 
protrudes from a large body into the fluid at different temperature that is extended surfaces have a wide apl industrial applications where fins are attached to the walls of the heat transfer equipment so as to increase the rate of heat transfer so as to increase the rate of heat of cooling or rate of heat heating clear so extended surfaces the example is basically your fins clear for this thing the fins can be of different shapes fins can be of different shape if suppose that's the wall and if we have a fin of this shape this is called longitudinal extension of a rectangular fill longitudinal extension of a rectangular fill clear second can be a fin on a cylindrical body protruding outwards clear something like this protruding outwards so as to increase the heat transfer area so this is cylindrical tube with a fin of a rectangular profile second profile will be second type of fins can be longitudinal fin longitudinal fin of a trapezoidal profile for trapezoidal profile fourth type of fin can be longitudinal fin of a parabolic profile something like this fifth type of fin can be you know a cylindrical tube with a you know a radial fin something like this a radial fin fourth can be a cylindrical tube with radial fin of truncated conical profile that is the fin can be of a conical shape clear another type of fin is your pin fill that's a wall and fin of a pin profile for another type can be wall with a conical shape fin and another type of profile can be wall with a parabolic fin that is a parabolic shape okay. so we have different types of fins a rectangular cylindrical trapezoidal parabolic radial fin sorry that's e f is your conical fin conical truncated conical fin pin we have conical shape and then we have a parabolic fin so all these types of fins are there so let's analyze one simple system of fin for this let's consider a fin extruding through this wall which is of a rectangular shape the wall is at a surface temperature ts the ambient temperature is 
to infinity the fin is having a cross sectional area a and having a thermal conductivity k and heat transfer coefficient is represented by hc further there is an assumption there is a very important assumption that transverse temperature gradient that's a very important term transverse temperature gradient through fin is negligible transverse temperature gradient means the temperature within the fin is does not vary it remains constant and that is represented by tx that means uniform temperature distribution in the fin uniform temperature distribution in the fin clear so transverse so you the, this term is very important transverse temperature gradient that means there is no variation along the longitudinal length of the fin clear so now we're going to apply a heat balance considering a small shell of thickness delta x we're going to apply the heat balance that is heat input minus heat output there is no generation and under steady state the accumulation term is zero further as in this there will be a conduction occurring and further there will be some sort of a convection occurring so rate of heat output will be through this shell will be because of the conduction as well as because of the convection so let's apply the heat balance on the shell so heat input is equal to q x at input heat output through this shell it will be let's say q x occurring at x plus delta x and further there will be heat output because of convection let's say that will be dqc dqc because through a fill which can be represented as h area area can be written as perimeter into dx into the temperature difference t minus t infinity let's say the temperature in the film is represented by dx so putting this equation in the main equation that is in minus out plus generation equal to accumulation under steady state this is zero there is no generation so what we have is in minus out is zero so we have one it's input term and we have two output terms so we can write qx minus qx plus delta x minus hp dx into tx minus t infinity equal to zero dividing the entire equation by delta x okay let's say delta x and d not let's not write dx let's write delta x and taking the limits so limits delta x approaches zero qx minus qx plus delta x minus hp So what we have is k a d square t by d x square minus h p into t x minus t infinity. So that is d square t by d x square minus h p by k a to t x minus t infinity equal to zero. Which can further be represented as del square theta by del x square minus m square theta equal to zero. Clear? Where m is nothing but under root of h p by k a. 
Now this is the second order differential equation whose general solution is represented as theta is equal to c1 e mx plus c2 e minus mx and this represents the temperature profile within the film. Now there are different boundary conditions. First boundary condition will be at x equal to 0. At x equal to 0 the base of the fin is having the same temperature as that of the wall. So Tx at x equal to 0 is nothing but Ts. Therefore we can write your theta is nothing but theta s that is t s minus t infinity clear the second boundary condition depends upon different cases so case one will be if we have a long fin long fin very long fin so in a case of a very long fin or you can write very long film and the temperature at the end of the fin is having the same temperature as that of the surrounding that is theta is zero that is Tx is same as T infinity at x equal to as x or x approaches infinity that is a long film case. Case 2 will be if the end of the film is insulated that is at x equal to L we have case 3 case 3 temperature at the end of the temperature at the end of the film Case 3 temperature at the end of the film is fixed temperature. Let's say Tx is Tl at x equal to L. So at x equal to L, T is equal to Tx. So theta can be written as theta L. And case fourth is at the tip. there is a heat transfer via convection okay that is at x equal to l we have minus k t theta by dx at x equal to l is nothing but h theta l clear so depending upon these four cases we are going to solve for the temperature profile and we're going to calculate the heat transfer rate clear now before we solve that let's first come to the main equation that is this equation the temperature profile theta now theta which is nothing but c1 e mx the solution now this solution 
can also have can be represented in other way which is let's suppose theta is nothing but c cos hyperbolic of mx plus d sin hyperbolic of mx now what is sin hyperbolic mx it is e mx minus e minus mx by 2 and cos hyperbolic mx is e mx plus e minus mx by 2 so if we substitute this term over here and this term over here so theta can be written as c times and d is which on rearranging can further be written as c plus so this can be represented by c1 e mx plus c2 e minus mx so hence instead of using this result this general form of theta we can use this form of solution because then we'll have because this expression can easily be solved for different boundary conditions clear so instead of using this we will use theta as nothing but c cos hyperbolic mx plus d sin hyperbolic mx so let's come to your case number one that is long film long film for long film we said that at x equal to infinity theta is zero so theta at x equal to infinity can be represented as c1 e mx plus c2 e minus mx now at x equal to infinity this term is 0 whereas this term approaches infinity and this is already 0 so therefore c1 has to be 0 so finally our equation reduces to c equal to c to e minus mx using boundary condition 1 at x equal to 0 theta is theta s so what do you have c2 c2 is nothing but theta s so hence theta by theta s is nothing but e minus mx okay so that's the temperature profile for the film for a case where the fin is very long now heat transfer rate now q is minus k a dt by dx or it is q minus k a c into d theta by dx now d theta by dx is nothing but minus theta s m e minus mx so substituting this value of theta over here so q is minus k a c minus theta s m e minus mx what is m minus minus gets cancelled up so we have k a c theta s m is h p by k a c under root e minus mx so hence q becomes k a c h p c h p under root theta e minus mx clear so at the base 
x is 0 so heat transfer at the base is nothing but hp k ac into theta s clear that's your first case the temperature profile will draw the temperature profile later on clear then we have the second case case number two that is insulated film for insulated film that is at x equal to l we have t theta by dx is zero for this thing let me consider theta as c cos hyperbolic mx plus d sin hyperbolic mx i'll be using this expression to solve the temperature profile because it will be easy to use this expression now d theta by dx will be c m sin hyperbolic mx plus d substituting at x equal to 0 and this term is sorry sorry mistake that is dm cos hyperbolic mx now substituting over here theta at 0 will be the theta at 0 that is at x equal to 0 now at x equal to 0 will have theta at 0 as c cos hyperbolic mx plus d sin hyperbolic mx so sin hyperbolic of 0 is 0 whereas cos hyperbolic of mx is 1 so therefore c comes out to be theta s according to your first boundary condition now d theta by dx at x equal to l that is from this equation from this equation at x equal to l at x equal to l d theta by dx will be 0 so this term come out to be c m sin hyperbolic ml plus d m cos hyperbolic ml so when you substitute this term this is equal to 0 so we know the value of c substitute back over here calculate your d so d comes out to be theta s sin hyperbolic ml over cos hyperbolic ml so we have calculated c we have calculated d substituting back in the main equation so theta comes out to be theta s into cos hyperbolic mx plus sin hyperbolic ml ml into sin hyperbolic mx so upon rearranging So we have cos hyperbolic ml cos hyperbolic ml mx plus sine hyperbolic ml sine hyperbolic mx so this becomes a formula for cos so theta s is cos hyperbolic m l minus x and cos hyperbolic m that's the expression for temperature profile for the insulated film. Now heat transfer coefficient. Which will be nothing but under root of HPACK 
थीटा एस इंटू टेन हाइपरबोलिक एम एल क्लियर बिकॉज डी थीटा बाई डी एक्स यू कैन कैलकुलेट एट एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो सो दैट्स दी हीट ट्रांसफर एट द पेस एस एच पी के ए सी इंटू थीटा एस इंटू टेन हाइपरबोलिक एम एल देन कम्स केस नंबर थ्री केस नंबर थ्री दी बाउंड्री कंडीशन आर एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो थीटा एस थीटा एस एक्स इक्वल टू एल थीटा इक्वल टू थीटा एल एंड यूज थीटा इक्वल टू दी मेन इक्वेजन दैट इज सी कॉस हाइपरबोलिक एम एक्स प्लस डी साइन हाइपरबोलिक एम एक्स सॉल्व दिस इक्वेजन कैलकुलेट द वैल्यू ऑफ सी वन सी टू so you will have a final i'll go give you the final expression for temperature profile theta by theta s is theta l by theta s sin hyperbolic mx plus sin hyperbolic m l minus x over sin hyperbolic ml determine this thing this profile and finally your heat transfer that will be cos hyperbolic ml minus so this will be determined using these two boundary conditions that is for case number 3 case number 4 that is the conduction case sorry convection case So minus k d theta by d x at x equal to l is nothing but h theta l. So that's your first boundary condition that is at x equal and the second boundary condition is at x equal to zero. We have theta equal to theta s. Using these two boundary condition and your main equation, sine hyperbolic m x. determine the temperature profile determine the value of c1 c c c and d substitute back in the mean profile and you will have a theta expression as this sin hyperbolic cos hyperbolic ml plus Clear, and heat transfer coefficient will be given as sorry heat transfer rate. Sine hyperbolic M L plus H by M K So you can determine these two profiles as we did for case number one and case number two. Clear? Then, once we are done with these four cases, then comes a very important term for fins, that is the effectiveness. Now, what is? How do you define the effectiveness of the fin? Fin effectiveness is basically how effectively a fin can enhance a heat transfer how effectively a fin can enhance a heat transfer that is its effectiveness that is given by efficiency uh, epsilon with the f in the subscript which is nothing but the ratio of fin heat transfer it's called uh, it's basically the ratio of the fin heat transfer to heat transfer when there is no fin that is without fin so effectiveness is q f divided by q let's for a take let's over here take a case of an adiabatic fin that is adiabatic fin that is case number 2 
idiopathic case now in idiopathic case fin effectiveness sorry heat transfer because of the fin it was represented by hpkac into tan hyperbolic ml whereas obviously into theta s also and if there is no fin then the heat transfer will be nothing but hac into theta s now theta s theta s gets cancelled up and h and ac gets also gets cancelled up so we finally left with kp hac into tan hyperbolic ml that's the effectiveness for the adiabatic case now, so if the fin is very long let's say very long that means your ml is much greater than 2 then tan hyperbolic of ml approaches 1 that is a case of an infinite film for infinite film and for long films that means the effectiveness reduces to kp by h ac that is the effectiveness for long films should be greater than 1 should be greater than 1 now in order to increase effectiveness thermal conductivity of the material can be higher also the heat transfer coefficient should be low as low as possible then only the effectiveness increases further then we have p by ac the ratio of the perimeter of a fin to the cross sectional area of the fin now for this case let's suppose we have a square fin for a square fin the perimeter will be 4 into w that is the side of the wall and the cross sectional area will be w square so p by ac is nothing but 4 by w that means smaller the w the higher will be pac the smaller the w the higher will be p by ac and higher will be the effectiveness higher will be effectiveness so it's preferred to use thin and closely spaced fins to increase its effectiveness to increase its effectiveness also effectiveness we defined as qf by q or can we write in terms of resistances it's nothing but tb minus t infinity by r fin and tb minus t infinity by r convection or we can write it as not r convection let's not write r convection because it's a combination of it will be a conduction so let's write the thermal resistance only that is thermal resistance to rf so effectiveness is nothing but the ratio of thermal resistance due to convection to thermal resistance because of the felt so that's the another way to define the effectiveness it's nothing but the ratio of thermal resistance due to conduction to thermal resistance of a fin so in order to enhance the heat transfer so in order to enhance the heat transfer the fin resistance should be lower than the film resistance of the conduction that means this has to be lower in order to increase the effectiveness of the film so this is effectiveness second terminology in fin is your fin efficiency now what is fin efficiency fin efficiency is defined as the ratio of 
energy transferred through real film to that of energy transferred through an ideal film now what is an ideal film that is the efficiency ideal film is something a film which is having a material which is perfectly conductor having infinite thermal conductivity the entire film is at a base material temperature is at a base material temperature clear uh, i'll show you a simple diagram to differentiate what is a real film and what is the ideal situation then let's suppose this is the film if you can see over here there will be a variation in the temperature in the film so that's your real film in the ideal film the entire film as well as the base temperature will be at the same temperature so this will be the ideal case clear so the ratio of the heat transfer through real film to ratio of heat transfer in the ideal film will give us the fin efficiency so fin efficiency will be q real by q ideal which will be let's say hp k ac into theta l tan hyperbolic ml and in the ideal case it will be h area that is perimeter into the length into the delta L. so this gets cancelled up so efficiency can be written as h p k a c divided by h p l into tan hyperbolic m l so cal uh, cutting down h and p so finally we are left with tan hyperbolic m l divided by m l so that's the efficiency of the fin clear now heat transfer through any fin can also be rewritten as q equal to h a t minus t infinity that is this thing q h area into theta l into infinity that is this thing or can i write it as t infinity minus t over 1 by effect efficiency into h into a so that means the resistance through the fin can be defined as 1 over efficiency h into a that is the resistance through a fin now let's find out the overall efficiency through the fin for overall efficiency let's make a diagram where we have a wall and there are n number of fins and there are n number of fins then let's say ab is the base area af is the surface area of single fin at is the total area and let's say there are n number of fins so total area will be at which is ab plus n times af so heat transfer through fin array this is your fin array so heat transfer through fin array can be written as qt which is q through the base plus n times qf which will be h area of the base into tb minus t infinity 
प्लस एन टाइम एफिशिएंसी इनटू एच इनटू एरिया ऑफ़ द फिन इनटू टी पी माइनस टी इनफिनिटी सो एच कैन बी टेकन आउट सो इट विल बी ए बी प्लस एन टाइम्स एफिशिएंसी इनटू ए एफ एंड टी बी माइनस टी इनफिनिटी है now a b in terms of a t can be written as a t minus n times a f plus efficiency n a f to t b minus t infinity now n f n f can be taken out so h a t minus n एफ इंटू वन माइनस एफिशिएंसी इफ आई टेक ए टी आउटसाइड सो एच ए टी वन माइनस एन ए एफ बाय ए टी टी बी माइनस टी इनफिनिटी क्लियर नाउ दिस टर्म कैन बी रिटर्न एस ओवरऑल एफिशिएंसी ऑफ़ द फिन That is eta naught. So overall efficiency of eta naught of the fin is one minus n a f over total area into one minus. So q t is nothing but h a t into into t b minus. infinity or it can also be written as t b minus t infinity r t overall where overall resistance through the fence is 1 over h a now if you compare this heat transfer rate if you compare this heat transfer rate without fence Without it is this thing. Or it's Newton is area of the base plus n times area times T B minus T S, which is nothing but. T B minus T infinity divided by R, which is nothing but T B minus T infinity divided by one by H A. Clear? Now, if we compare this term with this term what do you have we have that in order to enhance heat transfer in order to have enhance heat transfer a t eta naught must be greater than the area that is to increase the effectiveness area effective area to increase the effective area clear so this is how we calculate the overall efficiency of the fins the efficiency of the single fin and the effectiveness of the fin clear thank you so much